stream of inventions. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson, the challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits, bamboo shooters, rubber band guns, erector set, go-kart engine, bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring in from the shed, and various other things he'd hauled back from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for inventions just kept on flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them, and he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever had graded his test hadn't met Lennox. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux, and as a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science fairs came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another, until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie, but it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't even been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming, now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as the guy who built his own booming sound system out of cast-off electronics. It even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation, and that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced them it would. He was right. As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure, if not for Lonnie. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering with his own inventions in, finally, his own workshop. Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then whoosh. The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful it created a curtain swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together into a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work? A man asked. Sure, Lonnie said, wanna see? Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed air into a chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing water out with a whoosh. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more, so he went to company after company, after toy company after toy company. The word no flowed again and again, but finally one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water-propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith 
quit his day job and devoted himself to full-time inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart, even the one for the water gun. These things happen sometimes, but when they happen, one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have the money he'd been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home and into a little apartment. He was angry and scared, but Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving problems, and he still believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun, if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and whoosh. Wow. Kids everywhere agreed with that. Wow. Lonnie's water gun called the Super Soaker became a smash hit. In no time, there were Super Soakers in backyards and on beaches and parks and on playgrounds. Each sale of a Super Soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours, all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today. Because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson does best. And his ideas just keep on flowing.